Welcome to Uncage, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with Medea Mushtaq. Hey, Medea, how are you? Yeah, doing fine. Thank you. I'm Ben. Thanks for having me here. I'm excited to talk to you. Medea is the founder and managing director of Answer Inside, Transition and Scale Up. And those key words there, transition and scale up, will be something that we'll talk about in how her consultancy basically helps coach businesses and move them forward for growth and scaling. But before we get there, Medea, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Yes. Um, yeah, so um, then I have been working as a business accelerator mentor and transformational therapist for 24 years. Um, uh, my career can be basically split in three phases. Uh, before the pandemic, the pandemic years, and post the pandemic or post pandemic well after two real years of pandemic and then yeah i hear you so we are still there and uh <laughs> yeah it's not going uh, anywhere well so uh before the pandemic i worked as strategy consultant uh, transformation director and then uh, i moved up to uh, become a managing director ceo board member uh, all with larger businesses um, and uh, family offices, hedge funds, uh, basically uh, picking up uh, smaller medium enterprises and more the medium than the smaller ones and supporting them to turn around, scale up, and, and then going for uh, being sold basically by the new owners. Uh, I worked over 14, unders- in, for, for 14 industries, um, it was successful. And uh, I managed to move businesses from uh, losses to double digit profit and growth. Always combining basically psychology, technology, business transformation. And I really love the work that I'm doing. I started doing this when, when I was like 32, basically the real turnarounds of businesses and it's dazzling because the moment that you change mindset of people in one month, and then uh, make business profitable in the first months, under the first six months, basically, and really turn around the business and that it starts uh, moving fast in one year. It's amazing. It's it's a kick to do that. It's absolutely amazing. I so, love that. And I can see that, you know, you are someone who's brought together all of these different areas. And I'm particularly interested in the psychological aspects of it. That seems quite interesting. But tell me more about the creation of Answer Inside, Transition and Scale Up. Yeah, so it, and then we come to the years of the pandemic itself. So <laughs> in 2020, uh, um, I had just at the beginning of 2020. I just had finished a program for a hedge fund in the UK who acquired a large business in the Netherlands and Belgium. And it was not a good in a good shape. So it needed to be restructured. I moved it from 1.2 million euro of loss to 18 million euro of profit. And well after- done. <laughs> Thank you. So after two years, I said, okay, so now I'm done. I build a team. Uh, I build the talent in the, in the team and I could hand over and just get some rest. And then I went to finish my studies as transformational therapist. So I was really enjoying myself. And then the pandemic hit and it was like a shock for everybody. You would, you would remember that people get in lockdown and change of policies and thinking, what the heck is this? And then I started like everybody who's working on transformational turnaround saying, well, what's, what's really happening here? And where is the freaking exit? And how to support, who needs support and how to fix this? And I started doing research about it and really, really deep research. I was asking for information from the International Monetary Fund and the World Economic Forum and the United Nations and trying to understand what is this going to impact? And, how to solve this. And then I discovered that like 50% of the small and medium enterprises will cease to exist in two years if this 
proceed. And uh, these businesses employ basically 50 to 90% of the working population in Europe. And in a, like, for instance, in India, it's 90% of the population. So I thought, oh my God, this is a disaster. And then the next thing, somebody needs to do something about it. And then I thought maybe that somebody is just me. And uh, okay, so where to start? And I thought, okay, so I have 24 years of experience and I, I'm doing something that I'm very successful at. And I was being asked by different businesses to do this, to earn the money. And then I thought, why not write a book about this and write it for a small and medium enterprise and get it to as many countries as I can and reach out to as many businesses as I can and translate basically the, the work I do in solutions uh, that are highly digitized so that we can reach more people and start giving classes, lectures, and telling people this is happening, this is how to work with it, and get on with it, uh, build an academy to teach people how to do this, uh, and then try to reach out to as many businesses as I can, build podcasts, publish, etc. So that was, that was uh, what I was doing uh, during the pandemic. So the book is finished. And basically in 2020, in six weeks, so I was working like crazy to get it done on time. And uh, it has been published, greatly picked up. It's in five continents and 25 countries, and it became a, a bestseller. Uh, and I set up Answer Inside in 2020. I set up a team. I worked uh, on setting up really solutions that can be scaled with digitization so that we can simultaneously work with 88 businesses at the same time, instead of sourcing one, two, or up to eight businesses. And I have a question for you, Medea. I mean, it's a fascinating moment we're living through, you know, the pre, the during, and the post-pandemic phases. Yes. And, you know, I think there's been this backdrop of transformation in business for a long time now, I guess, throughout our lifetime because of the digitization of business and now the datatization of businesses. Yes. <laughs> but tell me some of what you're seeing. What are the, some of the big trends that you're seeing in the space? right now so uh, basically when uh it, it, when we piece up everything together from 2020 and we see how we are going to progress until 2030 what we would see is that yes we had the pandemic and it changed basically the feeling of safety and the policies so that first wave is uh, focusing on health and uh, making um uh, places like airports etc trying to digitize them as much as possible so that you can eliminate contact where possible. So that we saw that happening in some major airports, uh, the, it's, they became really highly digitized. They moved away people from uh, the airports. Uh, I, I still remember that I was coaching somebody from IATA uh, um, uh, and uh, they sent away like worldwide in the airlines industry more than 20 million people. So jobs lost because of this. Wow. So it's it's a big number. It's like more than the, all the people of the Netherlands. So I was like, oh my God. So this is one industry. And then what happened in, during 2020, there was a book that was published called The Great Reset. And uh, the World Economic Forum was saying that we are now going to shift a lot of industries, it's basically all the industries and we think them because of artificial intelligence, because of what's happening and it's no longer sustainable. Uh, so there was a start of a big move of resetting industries. So we see now, for instance, if you are in, uh, in the big cities in Europe and you have a car which is 10 years or older, you are no longer allowed to enter the city. Um, when you are in a big city like uh, in Belgium, for instance, uh, you start walking there and you see uh, uh, cars that you can uh, rent with your phone. Uh, basically, you can book them, you take the car, you use it and then place it somewhere where they tell you that's next spot. And we are starting to share cars without having property. 
so that's another thing. And the other thing that we are say, seeing is the fourth industrial revolution. Right? It's basically uh, artificial intelligence is being pushed as, at a very high speed. And it's going to change business models, earning models, uh, because everybody's working with a mobile. Uh, we are starting to act differently, to use services differently. And because of the lockdowns, this has been really speeded up. And behind the scenes, digitization, but also the use of artificial intelligence is, is really increasing. And what, tell me more. I mean, I see it. And I mean, I think that the trends that you're spotlighting are, are right in line with what we see from things like the World Economic Forum and the Fourth Industrial Revolution, things like that, yes. um, which is spot on. So one of the things that really, I think, came to the fore, and you mentioned it up front, was kind of the human side, the psychological side, the stress that, in fact, all this change has been putting on people. And I'd just be curious how you're able to factor that in, because I'm seeing that quite a bit across the board in a lot of companies and just be curious what you're seeing. Yeah, so really great question because uh, when 2020 started, uh, let's say basically the pandemic and it started uh, in the different countries and uh, you saw the shock reaction of people. Uh, I was finalizing my study as therapist and I was taking additional courses in the US for trauma therapy. And I had the chance to work with uh, Peter Lehin, and he is a specialist in trauma therapy and um, somatic experiencing. And it's basically how we feel trauma in our bodies. And he was talking about the pandemic as a collective, collective trauma because uh, you have no influence or something, it's inflicted on you, and you have a, um, let's say, uh, a helplessness. You wait for things to happen and people will tell you what to do. So all your autonomy is gone and you need to wait there and you are watching basically. And that's what happened to a lot of people watching for the next news. And they are saying, we told that it was less than it's becoming worse. And then you have a lockdown and they will say, well, we need to wait like for six weeks and the six weeks become 12 and the 12 become 18 and then it becomes a year and then and so forth and so forth. And the children, Vito. So what happened now is that a lot of people went through trauma and uh, they need to recover from that. Then one, they need to be aware of that. They need, then the next move is to move away from the fear and start basically acting less from the limbic brain and from the, basically their hypothalamus and from their, their thinking brain. And there needs also to, something to start shifting in the mindset. And I'm seeing that in the work that I am doing with a lot of entrepreneurs in Africa, uh, in, uh, in the US, Canada, uh, and having also the chance to work with them in 2020 and 2021, uh, I saw the fear of not moving forward. And, and then um, uh, working with people like Bob Proctor telling you, uh, and luckily he's, uh, he, he died. Yeah. Uh, but he was one of the coaches I worked with. And he's saying, you create your own economy. The shift starts in your mind. Yeah, when I hear you. And I think company. you're capturing it perfectly. And I just be curious because, you know, COVID presented us with so many business transformation challenges. One notable one, I suppose, would be the shift from working in our offices every day and commuting and suddenly finding yourself working at home maybe more, perhaps if you have to go into an office or to a factory, working in a very different way. And so just be curious if that was something that kind of came up over the last couple of years for you. Uh, yeah, so you saw basically, for instance, in the Netherlands, it was uh, advised not to go to the office. And people were working uh, from home for two years. So if you have young children, it's a complete mess. Luckily, my child was like 14, 15, but she had homeschooling. And it's a very different ball game. Uh, children were having really difficulties because they cannot see their friends. They cannot go to their sports. They miss school, etc. But also the parents, you turned into working uh, uh, mom or dad. And at the same time, you are also a teacher. And you need also to tend mentally to uh, uh, basically to 
the mental safety of your children. Uh, so that's that's a thing that you would see across the board with all the clients that I was working with, and it's how to balance life. Uh, but beyond that, basically, is how to move from the fearful, fearful state that you are in and starting basically to shift into possibilities, uh, basically to push uh, um, uh, for the opportunities of your business and not getting um, trapped in the narrative that we are hearing all the time. In the wow, news. I love that. I mean, Medea, I think you have a statement there probably should be your next book, maybe from fear to possibilities. I feel like that is quite a statement because to me, fear impacts so many areas. You know, we had fear of literally survival. We had fear in terms of what it would mean for our loved ones. We had economic fear, right? Uh, and it really, really did stop many, many people from being able to move forward. It's a fascinating one. But strangely enough, it also kind of opened up people to start thinking about the world in a totally different way, right? It's a fascinating moment. And I think that that really leads into my next question, which is, you know, now we're at this point, we're in 2022. I mean, you know, if you'd asked me at the beginning of this year, Medea, I would have told you this was going to be an amazing year and mm -hmm. everything would be incredible. But this has been quite a challenging year for a variety of reasons, macro and micro across the board. And, you know, what are you seeing that's coming out of the pandemic now and what's top of mind for folks as they approach topics like transition and scale? So uh, basically what we are seeing is a chain of transitions being basically lift by entrepreneurs and everybody living in this magnificent world. Uh, so the pandemic started, then after that, there were like change policies about health, and then we had like great reset of industries, change of the, uh, um, for instance, around CDBDC, so the, the, like the currencies, digital currencies that will be rolled out. A uh, green transition is uh, combined with the, uh, with the war, uh, has become really a core agenda and then digitization of Europe. Uh, so it's it's never a dull moment. It's all following each other. And I think the, the winners will be the ones who are able to transition as fast as they can and take their teams with them. Uh, we are seeing, and that's the expectation, 50% of the small and medium enterprises will cease to exist. Hands down, 50% will need to transition if they are in an industry that needs to change to move towards the future and they can still survive. So it's transition and then scale and other businesses who are really lucky, who are working already on AI or working on the metaverse solutions or working on virtual reality or they are starting to see a lot of demands, but they don't know how to scale the business. And yeah. the choice of a lot of entrepreneurs because of everything that happened, but also because they have, uh, they don't see a lot of opportunities basically or financially. Uh, they think I have a given amount of revenue coming. Uh, I, I need to try to fix everything with this amount and with the people I have and that's it. And they, they just are surviving to get there. So this is, this is a thing that we are seeing. And then they say, oh, uh, I really need help with this, but I don't think that I can afford it. We'll just come to the table. Let's talk. I love the fact that one of the tenants that's come out in this conversation loud and clear is that you are very, very interested in these businesses that are, let's call them small to medium sized businesses or, you know, sometimes maybe accelerated growth opportunities but small and medium sized businesses. And I share that, in, that the value and the importance of that economic sector, because it is the bedrock of our society in general. And so it's certainly concerning when I hear some of those facts and figures that you're throwing out and finding ways to support them, making sure that they don't get locked in fear and they actually embrace this progress that you've just outlined is amazing. Medea, if someone wanted to reach you, where's the best place to find you? LinkedIn. <laughs> 
LinkedIn, that's the way. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. LinkedIn is always a great channel for this type of stuff, which is excellent. Well, I've really enjoyed talking to you. It's been great to have you on the Uncaged show. We've been speaking with Medea Mushtak. She is the founder and managing director of Answer Inside, Transition and Scale Up. And we've been talking about a lot of different issues, really the transition and scaling challenges that businesses have perhaps they had before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and now this world that we're entering post-pandemic and trying to help small to medium-sized businesses specifically and more acutely on some of those challenges because they're such a critical part of our society. Medea, it's been a great talking to you. We look forward to having you back again on the Uncaged Show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank Cheers. You.